stop recording and start again. going on there. Let's go through the mist so to explore a little. Crickets, uh, nineteen, nine, t minus ten. Yeah, I would prefer that fuel you can buy easily. All right. Wait, what? Again, they say uh, this. They sell resources that they buy to... What an insanity! <laughs> Come on! Up to Winchester to sell seeds, I guess. What's the profit going to be? Teas for fifty. No, forty. That's not going to be much. Seventy-five. 
Yeah, whatever. So they sell souls for the same price. As Magdalene's. Dry tea. Oh, I could use uh, tea in Chris Welcome. What's my welcome right now? I thought I got... oh, I got it, but then the game crashed. I got content carry trophy. Great, I just wasted the welcome, I think. Maybe not. So I could get... hours here? Let's do that. Uh, partial success. You wait until the lights in the cottages have all gone out before you begin your starlit work crew quietly. Yeah, I read that. Wait. Uh, the mostly rubble and set to prying one of the past stones from its setting. Suddenly your lookout hisses a warning. Someone is coming. additional welcome you dispatch your earliest talkers to overwhelm the wanderer you will lose a crew like it's not worded in a way you may lose a crew entrance you've made is narrow and uh, embraced perhaps a nimbler member of your crew could squeeze through. Huh? Well, let's try capturing. It is a villager on uh, Midnight Stroll, quickly dealt with. He didn't see your face, but suspicion will inevitably fall on visitors. You finish your work, retrieving a set of gleaming lenses, each holding a soul from the ruins. No longer welcome. Oh. Whatever. It's souls, it's not ours. Here. To explore a bit. Oh, can we carry another one? Wow, one shot with this gun. <laughs> Got him. Okay, they are not that hard. Come back here. Yeah, whatever.
tail. I'll just try to circle to Port Prosper. So we're like exploring a bit as well as moving to the destination. go a new port traitor wood maybe who's been selling literature yep traitor's wood this is it i think it was prosper maybe Shops first, so I won't forget. Nice deal. Come on, what the hell? Is this a bug? <laughs> like, it happened the third time already. Jesus. This is ridiculous. Yeah, kind of, kind of ruining the trading, the merchant path, <laughs> you know. Literature for traitors wood. The Somerset students camped uh, in the dark woods require fresh. Also, they they've released updates. Like there was like a sovereign edition. I don't know why they didn't fix it. can be intentional. The Somerset students camped in the dark wood uh, require fresh materials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. The classics. Uh, the classic. Cysts. The classicists are delighted, but you can please the theologians. Too fanciful, apparently. The medievalists cannot seem to come to a definite uh, conclusion. You are paid well all the same and invited to go stargazing in the pale wood. Okay, they uh, sell bronze wood as well, and no uh, you. Just the same as circus. Traitor's Wood is a sprawling, secluded forest on the edge of the ridge. Few venture beneath its gloomy boughs, and uh, legend speaks of a king who sleeps under the barrow at the wood's heart. The wood's edge. The wood is vast as a uh, fell giant and fathomless as a great ocean. Like the ocean, much uh, of uh, it is hidden from view. Careful expeditions are required to go deeper into the wood. The forest is rich and wild in the verdant species of the ridge. Exploring the starlight dappled edges of the wood could be profitable. 
You may only perform one of these actions a uh, fortnight. The wood guards its secrets. Got of flowers. Really for, for, for seeds? They barely cost anything. Just uh, old space. Hunt, caged catch. This is more interesting. Caged catch is uh, 200, if I'm not mistaken. 200 coin. Slumber in the wood. One moment. Here, well, we could risk it uh, for a cage catch. Just don't see, or we could try that, and maybe it will give us a bunch of uh, packs of seeds. So it's actually worth it. Uh, actually, let's let's hunt. The game is the forest, so the game in the forest is unparalleled. Uh, the glories of the sport it uh, offers are spoken of even in the hunting lodges of Fort Avon. Oh wow! Didn't expect to actually get it. Noble ends. A keen-eyed stalker spies tracks uh, leading into the wood. You follow them. Birds cry out in the canopy ahead of you, startled by something moving. You quicken your pace. Your quarry slows, uh, allowing you to catch up. It stands uh, in a copse of silver, silver wood, uh, a proud stag with its many tinned triple crown. His majesty does not spare it your bullets. It makes five people to carry it back to your engine. Just a stag? Nothing unordinary? No uh, extra legs or tentacles or eyes? Okay, we finished here. Every fortnight. Campfire. Three figures draped in scholars' robes huddle around the campfire. They are arguing about kings, a banner in the colors of Somerset, London University's most respectable college, uh, gleams in the firelight. Respectable colleague? Or co college? As you approach, the discussion dies. One of the scholars, a woman with a fierce expression, stands up. Only scholars should be here. Are you one? Ha 
perhaps a gift would uh, persuade them to let you enter the camp they look wretched oh why not students of the grave the quite too tuperative by tuperative classicist compares you your offering with the burnt toast and wan tea they had been suffering on well all right i suppose the moon is uh, a by tuperative classicist her companions, a uh, dismal paleographer, a uh, paleographer, a forlorn young man, and a feckless theologian, a handsome youth with uh, an easy smile. They explain that they are here to enter the regent's grave, where they believe a sleeping king lies buried. They do not agree as to, to the king's identity. Unfortunately, the colleague has cut out, cut our funding. College. The classicist uh, explains. Speak to us if you'd be interested in helping. Er, everybody needs needs help now. I'm a traveling captain. Well, I guess let's speak first to them. Speak to the feckless theologian. The divinity student has a dozen bad habits and a firm conviction that Saint John, the apostle, slumbers in the regent's grave. The theologian, theologian stand is the largest of the three. Its interior has been decorated with the carpets and throws, which trap the smoke from his hookah. The air is a scented fog. The theologian is reclining on cushions, drinking wine. Okay. I'm going to ask him about his uh, comrades, I guess. Old tragedies. Ask about dismal paleograph paleographer. The theologian smiles innocently. Yes, we used to ha to know each other very well indeed. This was back at college before all his passion got sucked out of him. Besides, some people can't accept change. I need to check this word. Vituperative? Okay, ab abusive? Vituperative. V. Vituperative. Ugh. And this game likes to bring out words from words long forgotten. Uh. Vituperative classicist. Am I pronouncing classicist right? Even... Classicist. Yeah. Surprisingly. Eh? Mm. Ambition. <laughs> the same title of uh, this beat as uh, Incognito Princesses. I thought that was supposed to be unique. Uh, she's. Uh, Assist. Mm. She's very talented and very funny and not at all nice. 
And she's furious with me. Why? He won't say. I mean, okay, <laughs> wait. Um, she, she's furious with me. Why? He won't say. I think I've done enough damage with both of them. He shakes his head. If uh, it weren't for St. John and the academic senate sending me here, I doubt I'd uh, have seen her again until she became... Oh wait, it's the same character, fuck. It's the same uh, theologist, whatever. If it weren't for St. John's and the academic senate sending me here, I doubt I'd have seen her again until she became principal, of course. He asked the theologian about his theory. Uh, why does he think St. John is buried in a forgotten tomb, um, tomb in the, the high wilderness? The golden legend. The theologian's eyes widen. He is delighted to have been asked that question. According to the legenda aurea, St. John is sleeping somewhere waiting for the coming of the Antichrist, which would mean the end of the world. And uh, what is the high wilderness but that? We left the world behind and the stars are going out. And just after we arrive, we discover a tomb hidden in the ancient wood. He returns, he runs a hand through his hair. Sometimes we must have faith. Rubbish. Okay, classicist. The student of the ancient world is armed with more scorn than a vengeful goddess and a firm conviction that the Sumerian queen of uh, heaven sleeps in the region's grave. So there is also some part of Christianity faith it seems like this time. The classicist's tent is practical and largely unornamented. The interior is damp uh, for her various uh, uh, walking clothes, uh, which have been scattered across the floor. Uh, old playbills or gaudy and co gaudy costume jewelry hang from the tent ceiling like charms. The classicist is uh, pacing the end, reading Her Herodotus while smoking up a storm. Huh? A storm? Well, let's hear about her theory. The Queen of Heaven. It is obvious. She rolls her eyes. Fine. I'll tell you what I told the Academic Senate. The High Wilderness is heaven, not as the Church conceives it, but as the Sumerians did. A place of stars and chaos and impossible powers, in proximity to and affecting our own world, but far, far removed. She pauses for breath. Inanna, the Queen of Heaven, entered the underworld in search of her husband and was trapped for a time. That is the myth. This may be th the truth. She waves her hand dismissively. Besides, we made some promising discoveries in the wood. Inanna, the Queen of Heaven, entered the underworld in search of her husband and was trapped for time, but she entered Underworld. You, you talking that 
where we are right now is heaven. Right? So your theory makes no sense. The high wilderness is heaven. And I'm not sure what high wilderness means though. Is this where we are? Is this the reach? Or is this some other place I haven't been? Like where London is located, where you need to go through re relay? I'm not sure. Whatever. Ask about Atlas Theologian. A uh, strong opinion. Her invective goes on for an hour and she only remembers to fetch you tea midway through. A liar and a traitor and a fool, she says, spooning an, an entirely too much sugar. I love him. Uh, the, he, her, her hand shakes as she pours. Dismal paleographer, paleographer. Pale o grapher. A dim hue. She laughs scornfully but refuses to be drawn. I will not waste breath on the undeserving. Whatever. Dismal paleographer. A poleographer's stand is some distance from the rest of the camp and almost in the forest. It is smaller and more worn than the tents of the others. Inside, however, the tent is both warm and sturdy. No rain leaks through the oilskin. The poleographer's inks and uh, reference books and old uh, theater handbills are neatly Sorted. The polygrapher is uh, at a little wooden desk, conjugating the subjunctive. Uh, let's talk about his theory. Why does he think the Holy Roman Emperor, uh, Charlemagne? Charlie Mungen. <laughs> Never heard of that one. Is he real? Let's check it out. Yep. Well, he's kind of late. Start of medieval period. Not my kind of Roman Empire. Actually, let's check out the Charlemagne. Spelling. Charlemagne. Charlemagne. What is this then? English. Uh. The king, the king's duty goes on. It's a little strange, I admit. You certainly won't find this in, in hard. But there are legends that uh, say the great king did not leave his people on death, and instead sleeps in a burrow, waiting for their hour of need. He almost smiles. You query his people? I do not forget that we are British. Pauses for effect. But is our queen not a German parentage? Would not her ancestor look out for her? Europe's greatest monarch as she embarks on her most significant endeavor? So all of them just have no evidence, no clues to support. They just build it on their faith, basically. 
they found some tomb and nothing else and already building some theories. Did they find the tomb? Maybe they didn't even found it, I'm not sure. Have they seen any signs? I don't know, language? Into the woods, your inquiry induces a rare spirit of cooperation, scholars. Mm. Theologian. The last expedition into the woods found a document written in the correspondence. It contains directions to a place called the Steward's Front. Font. Um, the theologian explains. Alas, is it? Alas, that is all it needs to break their alliance. The paleographer begins to argue with the steward uh, that the steward was a chief position in Charlemagne household. The classicist makes a pointed reference to Ayana's husband. The theologian's smile is forced. If you could find the font, it would be an immense boon to my work. There there are sputters of pro protestation. Our work. You can begin expeditions from ex Expeditions into the deep of the wood. Hmm. Why not? Somerset College has uh, until recently funded expeditions into forest. Those who return speak of voices on the wind, murmurs in uninhabited groves. You must first decide how many crew you wish to take with you on your expedition. The more you take, the likelier your success, but at the risk of losing them all. Uh, when, Then choose your destination. Interesting. <laughs> well, I'll take or then, because if we lose, my ship is still going to function. I'm not sure what what's going to happen uh, at minus at less than six. Is it going to just stop working and I'm and I'm basically fucked, or it's just going to uh, move slower or something? Oh, I need supplies? Okay. Man, I'm rich after those selling expeditions, so to speak. Where I just bought stuff in the same port and sold them in the same port for a higher price. Ex expedition 10 crew this is five come on well I mean hmm. if I lose all five what's going to happen is this going to be the same as if I lose the, the whole crew like the effect I think there is a small, really small chance that I lose all of them, right?
Into the wood, a handful of your most loyal crew volunteer to join you. The hoist packs uh, and I each other with grim satisfaction. Uh, Expeditions for otherworldly artifacts are easier than for bronze wood. Occasionally, a quest will require you to choose a unique destination. Well, bronze wood I can actually sell. Those artifact artifacts I have, have no idea what to do. Uh, prepare for an expedition to the steward's font. Embark on expedition for otherworldly artifacts. Embark on expedition for bronzewood. Let's start with that quest we just got. Must be moderate moderate difficulty. The pale wood. The scholars share individually what they know. Their transcriptions. Are they going with them? Their transcriptions of the correspondence differ significantly, and. <laughs> And they refuse to work together on the single translation. Still, it should be enough to get uh, to the general area of the font. Oh, that's funny because it's actually true. <laughs> you you can translate in different ways. Uh, you gather your crew and make for the edge of the whispering wood. The scholars emerge from their tents to wave you off. No, oh, okay, they don't, yeah, they're not coming with me, they just yeah, give me directions, I guess. Uh, it begins to pour. The grey sky is angry. Your crew looks desperate to make camp and progress progress will be slow over sudden ground. Perhaps this is an opportunity to recover some of your strength. Okay. I can just go back, I guess. Success. A knight to forget. A navigator discovers a hollow way running through a vast copse of blackwood. You can set a watch at both ends and light a fire without being seen from elsewhere in the wood. Your crew stays up late swapping stories of old rulers and their various ends. Your sleep is dreamless as death. Far and farther into the woods you must go. Okay. The ground gives way to a bog. Uh, Grey and fetid as a newly slain corpse. It burps lazily. The marsh reeds uh, susurrate, growing in volume as you approach. There is English amidst the polyphony, na polyphony names yours and those of your crew what there is english amidst the polyphony style of simultaneously combining a number of parts, each forming an individual melody and harmonizing with each other. So basically they hear voices in uh, sounds of bog, like names. Um, cross the whispering bog, search for another round. 52, 22. Mm. 
lost in the forest. The wood uh, extends for miles, but so too does the bog. It is hours before you find a passable clearing. A glade of emerald hue nestled between a copse of silver trees that shiver and sigh like consumptives. Your crew follow your lead, hanging close by your torchlight. You keep up a count, checking the numbers of your crew as you go. Not everyone leaves the silver wood. Hmm. So was it n minus one? Like, we have five here, so they are at expedition right now. Uh, I think it just was minus one. That's not the date that it was. Far and further into the wood. The tree line parts ahead. Enter the steward's font. Below the thundering white water, a cave is visible just under the leap of the rock. A scythe of starlight. Sc you scale down the wet rock face and into the cave. It is several moments before your eyes adjust to the light. The cavern is not n natural. The walls are covered with bronzewood and uh, studded with the uh, Navarinite gemstones, driven in too deep to remove. Distant starlight from the cave mouth reflects off the stones, filling the cave with radiance. Towards uh, the black of the cave you find a silver seal the size of a crown and the curved crescent blade. Correspondence is scored on the blade's battered metal. It is too large to move, but you record the sigils. Perhaps one of uh, the scholars will be able to translate. You take the seal. No, that's it. I lost two crew. Apparently. And I'm back. Uh, can I give them the stuff? Or I should just uh, choose who whom I'm, I'm, I'm giving it? Choose the polyographer to translate the sigils on the scythe from the steward's font. I guess. <laughs> um, I would uh, love to have every translation, but let's see. He seemed more level-headed. He's very keen to know what, if anything, you found in the wood. You'll only be able to consult one scholar. They do not share their findings with rivals and guard their research jealously. The giggling place. The dismal polyographer grabs your notes eagerly. He swifts to an initial translation. This is a gift for service. Carolingian kings have gifts, spoils, riches, offices for loyalty. It was, huh? What's this? The polyographer labors over your notes for several hours. At last, he rises from his desk. I think this was given to, as an office. Tamer of the king's bower. But there is no position that I know of. The it gave authority over the giggling place, located somewhere deep. Do you have a map? It would be easier. He scrolls markings onto your map. Alright. Guess 
there is another place to... to head on. He gave me 250. And I spent two supplies, it's 80, and two fuel, it's 40. 120. Plus minus two crew, it's around 160 maybe. <clears throat> dangerous and not very profitable but interesting the parting glade the forest rises behind the station actually let's save just in case I don't want to lose this all uh, oh yeah scepter wanted here um, the forest rises behind the station where a few tents have been set up. What might be an owl calls from somewhere in the wood? In the far distance a great stone barrow rises over the trees. The glade is an oasis the glade an oasis of wild flowers and sweet meadow field in the midst of uh, the rooting trees is where captains meet to do business and bring their ventures to the wood to consultation. conclusion Ugh. and bring their ventures to the wood to conclusion here you go settler they have arrived at their destination. Whether or not they still wish to be here is another matter entirely. She gives you a smile as uh, weak as the tea she's been brewing aboard your engine before making a quick departure. A small purse is all she left behind in her cabin. You've delivered a settler. If you visit Queen's Cross in Port Prosper, you can pick up another or inspire a new crop of travel. Queen's Cross. I've saw Queen's Cross, but I haven't seen a port. Is it. Hmm? Oh no, never mind, it was Glory Cross. A strong wind bows the firs. Leaves blow through the boughs. What the hell is that? Report, of course. There's uh, no one here, but perhaps someone will take an interest in how the wood fares. Outside of the Somerset camp, the great forest of bronzewood trees has gone untouched by human hands. Voices sound in the deeps of the wood, forlorn and far away. The wood is vast and vastly lonely. Explore the glade, bring birds trail in nearby trees and uh, the sweet scent of flowers pervades the air. Far, far away. There's no one else here at present, but there are signs of recent passage. A discarded set of cups from the clandestine picnic. Loose paper hastily torn from a notebook, a few bullets in scorched grass, 
People come to the glade to conduct meetings as a neutral ground as a, and as a, a place to think, secluded from the watchful gaze of high wilderness. Okay. Are we finished here? Are they angry at me? It's like not. Just the same stuff. Okay, I think I finished. No bargains. All we have now is just uh, hours for uh, BP Circus. Uh, what's the time? Oh, it's been an hour, so time to go. See you later.